think if there's any news I can think of. Um, not really. Um, let's see, Zach and John Malin's Indiegogo has hit uh, over $100,000. I joined yesterday finally, and I think it's good that I waited because I, you know, yesterday going to see the Infinity Gauntlet or the Infinity War, that was such a fun movie. <laughs> oh, I'm so sad that I'm not there now. But, um, you know, it's sort of like at Christmas time, I'm more charitable. I think a lot of people are. And after a comic book movie, I'm more willing to um, fund a, uh, a Kickstarter, or in this case, an Indiegogo. I should probably put a link to it down in the description. Uh, remind me to do that, and I will do that. And um, as for other comic news, I was pretty busy all day, and I don't think I saw any. Um, I still have to get my copy of The Prisoner. Looking forward to that when I get the call from the comic book store. And uh, still waiting on Action Comic 1000 because I did not plan ahead. I did like the, my, my closest comic book store. They gave me this thing and I can put a list of 10 comic books. So if you can think of any comic books coming out that I should put on there, I'm thinking I should put a lot of alternate titles. Now, the reason I say 10 is because you get like a discount if you do uh, 10 titles. Now with Alterna, they're usually miniseries, which I like because you know how many issues there are going to be. But um, that just means I have to do a lot of work to keep my list at 10 all the time. So I, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. And I don't really know what I want to get because I don't, excuse me, I don't normally read regular comic books, you know, I'm into the old stuff. But um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, look at these. Now, first thing I noticed about these is the uh, quality of the paper. Let me put this over here. The quality of the paper is very nice. Uh, I didn't notice this. I don't think. Maybe I did. I'd have to go back and review the video. But here, there's a content warning. It says, uh, suggested for mature audiences. And um, this book starts off, you know, this is issue 12. I don't know what happens between issues 1 and 11. Uh, this is from January 1988. At first, I thought it was 87 because I didn't look at this here. I looked at the... Uh, Copyright data in here and here it's copyright, you know, at the at the bottom here. So yeah, so here we go. Spoiler alert. This is like, look at this guy. I mean, I loved opening this up and seeing this. Uh, and I have to say that, um, uh, you know, this is a guy named Baby. I'm not familiar with this criminal. And I know like the question used to belong to Charlton Comics, I think. Um, Rorschach in the Watchmen is based on... Uh, on the question, but I don't really know too much. I read um, in 52, like one of my favorite DC series, the question plays a prominent role in there and he dies of cancer and Montoya, who's a cop in the super in the Batman universe, uh, becomes the question. And in uh, Final Crisis, the Grant Morrison thing, which I, I have the big book over here in the corner. Let me just get that a second. So yeah, this is Final Crisis by Grant Morrison, and it's really confusing. I have no idea what went on in this book, and I, I read the whole thing. It comes with 3D glasses because there's a Superman story in here where Superman goes to an alternate dimension, and you need 3D glasses for that. And I think it's cool, but I think it's like, I have no idea what happened in this book. I should probably read it again sometime. Like the basic story is like dark, you know, the new gods are destroyed or, you know, it starts with the murder of Orion and dark side is on earth as a mobster. And this other character created by Jack Kirby, he gets taken over by dark side, I think. Then Montoya is the question. And then Superman, then all the like all the main DC com like just like in fifty two where the DC Comics characters are gone. Um, all the characters, you know, something happens to Batman. I forget what. Uh, something happens to Lois Lane, and so Superman won't leave her side. You know, Superman is Clark Kent, and then somebody says like, "If you come with me to this alternate dimension where the readers have to wear these weird three D glasses in order to be able to see the panels." Um, I'll like let you save her life or something like that. So, you know, and then I forget what happens to Wonder Woman too, but she gets taken off the board. All the main 
you know, the main trinity is taken off the board, and then there's no coherent coherent story. It also like um, intersects with uh, Batman R.I.P. also by Grant Morrison, and so at least I had read that before I read this. So when it gets to some of the Batman parts, like they're repeated from the uh, collected edition of Batman. R.I.P. But yeah, I have no idea what happens here. Darkseid almost takes over. Superman sings him to death. Is that right? I don't know. But anyways, so whoops. So I'm only telling you about it like the book just fell out. So yeah, this is what the book looks like outside of the slip case. And like these are the 3D glasses. I didn't want to put them together because I didn't want to break them. So I just kind of watch or I guess like this. I kind of put these over my head. And um, in this case, I did read, you know, it's got an introduction by Grant Morrison. Oh, look, it even had this little card in it. Like, you can't see anything on there because of the glare. But yeah, so I, I saved all those little pieces. I even have the receipt here from Half Price Books. I got this from Half Price Books. Like, they, they occasionally have these coupons. And like it starts on Monday with a 20% coupon or maybe it's only 10%. And like they have a coupon for every day until you get to Sunday when it's a 50% coupon. And I forget how much this was, but I had, it might've been like around $50, but I had both a coupon and somebody had given me a gift card. So I think I got the whole thing for like some somewhere around $7 I got this because of the 50% off. And then the, the gift card my friend had given me for my birthday that year that I got this. And so I chose to get a completely baffling book for my birthday. Congratulations, Douglas, you did it. Um, so anyways, this book here, you know, it starts off with this guy and you know, it's fairly chilling. This book really doesn't have very much, um, and you know, that's kind of gross there. So like the kid shows up, he's looking for candy. The guy says, uh, Halloween's tomorrow night, beat it kid. And then, Hmm. Wow. Oh. Hold on one second. I just got confused. I'm watching myself and I have um, X mouse on my computer because I use Linux a lot at work and I'm so used to that. I like Windows, but I wish that, you know, you could do a lot of the cutting and pasting. And, you know, the thing with X windows is like, if I put it on a window, it raises it after like a, a, a little time and I can set that time anyway. So like it, what happened is I somehow got the mouse on another window Anyways, you don't care about that. So anyways, like, just look at this. The artwork is really cool, but one problem I have with it, oh, I should tell you, this is written by Denny O'Neill, who was a big Batman guy in the 70s. I have this book here, which I got sort of like, you know, I count my comic book renaissance at 2015, and I got this before 2015. Oh, look, I still got the price on there. How much was this at the time? So this was $9.99 at the time. I don't know if I overpaid for it, but this is like uh, from the 70s. It's like all of these Batman stories. And I've only read like about a third of it. And, you know, the stories are not, to me, they're not that great. They are um, a little slow. I never got to wherever Man Bat shows up, so I don't know about that. But um, at the same time, yo, know, here it is. I just flipped to it. I should just... Put a bookmark in there. So you do have a piece of paper or something I can use as a bookmark. Oh, here we go. And then I'll just read the challenge of the man bat later, just kind of skip ahead in this. So um, so yeah, so Denny O'Neill wrote most of these stories in here. Maybe he wrote all of them. And you know, and one Batman is in a plane as you know, as Bruce Wayne, and then something happens, maybe it's hijacked, I forget. So I just want to make sure I am right. Uh, this story was by Frank Robbins. So maybe I'm wrong. For whatever reason, I thought that Denny O'Neill wrote a lot of Batman in the 70s. No, this is like a lot of Frank Robbins. Uh, this was a 400th issue with Man Bad in it. Okay, so there we go. I don't know what I'm talking about. You should probably turn off YouTube right now and, um, you know, go to Comics Explained or something like that. And, you know, it's very nice now outside and I should really be outside with my infinity gauntlet uh, collection. But I want to go through this because the story, like this is from 88, right? And um, when I'm reading it, it reminds me of like a cable 
drama from now. So like, you know, first we get this kind of horrible murder. And remember, this is a, an adult themed book. Then we get a sex scene uh, almost right after that. And then we get some weird like innuendo is like, um, like this character, I don't know who she is. It probably says in here, but she wants to run for mayor of this town. And I think she's married to the mayor right now. But this guy here, this blonde guy is the question and his last name is Sage. I forget what his first name is. So like, you know, they go and they uh, have sex and she says it's going to be the last time because I'm going to run for mayor. And he goes, uh, why? And uh, well, you know, why is it the last time? And she goes, because I have to be squeaky clean. And he goes, you know, politicians aren't squeaky clean. And she goes, well, I'm going to be. But then why are you doing this? So, you know, there's a little bit of like, why would you do this? Why wouldn't you be a politician with the ideals and values that she values. I mean, the only reason she doesn't want to do this as the politician is because she doesn't want to get caught in a press scandal, right? So, you know, that's really kind of, uh, kind of, uh, it's not noble. I'll say that much. So anyways, like, you know, again, this is an adult themed book and he just starts talking about how, what sticky and wonderful. That, that's the phrase he uses. And this phrase comes back while well, the stickiness comes back. Um, and look, we have a cameo by Stan Lee. He's like this kind of rent-a-cop. So like, you know, the uh, he's a news anchor, but he's out investigating. And, you know, um, real news anchors could learn a lot from him because I, I don't think, I think they just read what's on the teleprompter. So Stan Lee, like, is this kind of rent-a-cop or something like that. And for 20 bucks, he gives them some information on the case. And the uh, the question, the sage guy says, you know, you're all right. A uh, city cop would have held out for 50 bucks. And so, like, you know, we find out that the guy was getting ready to move when he was murdered. And that's part of the clue that, that of what's going on. Then we come back to this kid who's named Baby again. And, like, he comes to this next victim and he always asks the victims for candy and then he shoots him in the forehead with a BB gun. And I guess it's a lethal BB gun because they die. And if you'll see here, this is very suggestive of the Superman S, but it might not be. We just don't know. They never really show us. So then, um, you know, the guy's on the air doing his anchoring job and like his boss is always getting angry with him because he's always ed editorializing. He goes, second murder, apparently unrelated to the first, despite the identical method. That's uh, that's what Hub City police are saying anyway. And then his uh, manager or director or whoever this guy is, goes, police are saying, what does he mean by that? I've got my doubts when I remind them of a similar crime two years ago. And then he just goes on and on. You know, this is like 87. What year was the Dark Knight? Is it, or this is 88. So I think the Dark Knight was 85. So this might be taking a lot of cues from that. They said it could be a coincidence, which is like saying the sun rising every morning could be coincidence. It might not happen tomorrow after all. Uh, this is Vic Sage, so his name is Victor. Vic Sage reporting. He goes, uh, and then his manager comes in and jumps in his face and says, reporting, like hell, editorializing, speculating, smartassing, yes, but not reporting. And like, you know, isn't this exactly what we have today with our, with our media? So, you know, this is still a relevant book. The, um, and then, of course, we have this picture here. So, like, you know, she's eating fudge, and, like, this guy is still, Vic Sage is still thinking about the sex he had last night. So, like, this, it's, it's almost like, you know, in a cable show, this reminds me of a cable show. You know how I said the uh, Justice League, uh, I guess it was the 89, I guess it's the same year, the 89 um, annual reminded me of a cartoon show from like the 70s and you've got this, all this goofiness going around in my head i was hearing a laugh track <clears throat> in this like this is kind of ultra serious but it's also like in a cable show since they can show sex they have to show sex so since this is a 
they have a warning on here suggested for mature readers. They have to show sexual imagery. And so this woman is here and it kind of like goes along with him thinking about that woman that he had sex with, the one who wants to run for the mayor. And so like, you know, who eats fudge like that? Nobody. They just put that in there because they could. Anyways, it's only one scene and we shouldn't focus on it. It's like he begins investigating and it turns out like um, this guy that owns the housing development, there's something with him. He gets attacked. We got this whole attack with a dog thing. And this is kind of cool. It becomes the question, you know, the question doesn't have a face. And then he attacks the dog. He ends up having to kill it. <coughs> and then the dog's uh, master is this bodyguard for the guy who owns the project development. And that's what he was doing back here when he was like looking in the, uh, and this was a very prestige comic because, you know, this paper is, higher quality than other things from 1989. And you don't have the ads. I don't think there's any ads for x-ray specs or anything like that in here. So like this guy is called like the project development is called like Parson Hills or something. And this guy named it after his, um, his name is something really weird. It's like cars, hairs or something like that. It's almost like Corsair. Oh yeah, here we go. Pete Carstairs, Carstairs. Car stairs. It, it doesn't roll off the tongue. So, anyways, it's named Parson after his grandfather. But um, uh, so he he goes to investigate and like you know he kills the dog. And then this guy is an ex uh, a military guy who's working. It was his dog. I think the dog was a veteran too. And um, he just uh, you know Vic just kills it as the and he's like kind of bummed out on it. But the dog was attacking him, so it's like. He just kills it. And then we find Pete in the backyard and he's eating dirt because what was going on at this time was there was like some uh, dioxin scares in the news and, uh, you know, cities being abandoned because of it. So he can't believe that you know, he's like just going crazy because he was really sincere. He thought he was getting a deal on this lot, but it turns out the reason he got such a deal is because it was contaminated with dioxin. So he's eating the dirt to because he's having a psychotic break. He can't believe that it's poisonous. At the same time, he has like this bag of rat poison next to him. And uh, Vic tries to interview him. And, um, you know, it just says, I'm a proud, I'm proud of Parsons Acres. Damn it. He just can't like uh, deal with it. Right. And then he goes, this seems to be like his friend, roommate. I don't know who this guy is. He's in both the books I read. And like, you know, um, Vic talks to him and they get sage advice and, and, and whatnot. He might be a little bit like his Alfred. And then um, Vic is like digging deeper to get some more information. And then here this, this uh, young woman is who's, I think she's actually married to the current mayor and she's gonna run for mayor. And uh, like we got this dialogue here. Um, be real, Vic. I can't get my husband, the Honorable Wesley Furman, to do anything except deplete the world's alcohol supply and babble about Teddy Roosevelt. But I'll get in touch with the governor and the federal. So they're like trying to figure out about this dioxin poisoning. She goes, and Vic, yes, you asked me why I was running for office. This is why. This is why you can hear it from her heart. This is why. So this book is very serious. Like one issue I do have is like she's talking, but her mouth isn't open. The only person I've really seen with their mouth open uh, is that baby guy. Like, and you know, it's a little off-putting. It's almost like um, it's very static. Now this guy here at the beginning of the book, when he gets shot, you know, his mouth is open, but. Um, there's something off-putting about it. Now, when I read, um, and I didn't do this as part of my vlog, but maybe I should reread it, but it was uh, The Invisibles by Grant Morrison again. He's coming up, his name is coming up again a lot today. Um, the very beginning of that book, especially with the young kid who um, is being recruited by King Mob and such, it's like he gets put into this orphanage and he's in court. And it's very static like this. There's no, like, people are talking and there's no, their, their mouths are closed. It's almost like seeing a bunch of, um, they don't seem quite human. They seem a bit like mannequins. And um, and yet that's, it just always reminds me of this Doctor Who episode back in the day with Tom Baker, where they, 
he, the, uh, this is one with Leela, which, you know, she's the savage girl. And they land on this uh, mining ship, and there's a lot of robots on there. And people go nuts because the robots have kind of a human face, but they have no affect. So, you know, you're a human being, you're talking to another person, but or what you, you know, your mind is saying, this is another person that looks like a person. And that's what this book is like. It drives you crazy a little bit because there's no affect on these faces or like, you know, like, I mean, just, I, I know, yeah, I, it's just so weird. Now in terms of the uh, invisible story at the very beginning, at least that worked for, for that story because um, it was kind of very robotic for this one. I'm not saying it doesn't work, but it just, it drives me crazy. I don't know if I'll be able to read many more of these. So uh, here's a very nice page. I like the art on this page. I like the way they divided this. Um, so these are the people like um, Vic is on the news talking about it. And so all of these people are going, you know, it's a variety of people who live in the uh, subdivision. And, you know, my goodness, baloney, the children. I ain't moving. Pack the car. Too late now. And so like you have all of these people like having their reactions to it. And I, I really like that part. Um, and uh, then for whatever reason, I forget exactly, even though I read this today, <laughs> so I guess there's like something about it that it, it isn't quite memorable, but um, what's going on is it's Halloween. Like, you know, the kid shows up the day before Halloween. Now it's Halloween night and the people are leaving, you know, they're running away from this, uh, subdivision and like these kind of um, marauders come in and they really don't again it's like the woman eating fudge this there's just kind of they mention it for one panel and then he goes and finds um the uh car stairs guy and he's already dead and he, you know he determines that he's been poisoned because of the color of his skin there's no gunshot or anything like that he goes into the kitchen and he finds this baby guy again and he's eating ice cream, which is what he's want to do. And um, they get to talking and uh, uh, he goes, you came here to see Mr. Carstairs, right? Wanted more money, then I was gonna kill him, but he was already dead. So you found that good carton of ice cream open and waiting for you. And you decided to give yourself a little treat. Yeah, how'd you know? Oh, I'm very smart. I know something else very interesting. Mr. Carstairs added a special ingredient to that ice cream because he finally faced the truth and didn't want to live anymore. And like, you know, this is a very good series of panels is like, because this kid is dumb as he seems, he's like kind of getting it that he's in trouble. So he realizes he's eaten rat poison. That was like, you remember back, I only mentioned it briefly, like when Carstairs was eating, Carstairs, Carstairs is eating dirt. Um, he's got a bottle, of, I mean, a bag of rat poison next to him, conveniently marked rat poison. And so um, he killed himself. He committed suicide by eating the rat poison. And I guess he must have put it in the ice cream. I don't know if he was expecting the kid to come over. He's the one who had like um, those two people who were moving they knew there was dioxin and they were moving from that neighborhood and car stairs. Like one of the things was like, he goes, when people snap, they don't snap all at once. And so like he, he was smart enough, you know, he had enough of his mind left to hire this kid to murder people who might expose him. But then like some part of him just didn't want to, yeah, it's convoluted. But anyways, it ends like, um, Vic drags the kid out. He goes, he was too heavy to carry, but I'll drag him out. Um, he goes, uh, baby's too heavy to carry, but maybe the question can get him to a doctor in time anyway. Maybe not. Happy Halloween. And that's the end of it. And then, like, normally I don't read the letter section, but I kind of glanced through it. And um, one thing I found very interesting is, like, at, uh, at the end of the letters column, um, Denny O'Neill had a recommended book to read. In this case, it was a Scanner Darkly, uh, or through a Scanner Darkly. Was that? I thought it was always called a Scanner Darkly. So in here, he calls it Through a Scanner Darkly by Philip K. Dick, which is a great book. Um, of course, a few years ago, oh God, like 10 to 15 years ago now, they made a movie of it. It was animated. Uh, 
And I thought it was pretty good. You know, I read the book when I was a kid. I read it a couple of times. It's a very good book. I'm reading right now, I'm reading uh, Thomas Pynchon's um, Inherent Vice. And sometimes I'm thinking, is this Thomas Pynchon, Thomas Pynchon's version of Through a Scanner Darkly? And while there has some parallels and similarity, I mean, it's about drug culture in the in the early 1970s. And uh, Scanner Darkly is pretty much the same, like late 60s, early 70s, that kind of time frame. In fact, the book came out around 75 or 76, I think. So, so yeah, um, I, it just, I've been thinking a lot about A Scanner Darkly lately because of that. So it's kind of interesting to find it here. And it's kind of cool that Denny uh, recommends books. This one here reminded me of The Mothman. This one, this one I really liked. Like this one was really great. This is part one and part two, so I can't really say. It starts with another murder. So I think the question is more or less uh, uh, how you say a mystery book, a detective novel. He's a little like the shadow maybe. So um, so like this guy comes and he kills this guy. This guy's an army recruiter and he's just talking about, it's all about the pay and benefits. And, uh, and the guy goes, um, he goes, be all you can be, right? He goes, but you weren't, after, you know, after he kills him. Then he just walks away. Then we have this weird scene. I think we're getting a weird sex scene again. But fortunately, they kind of avoid sex in this issue. Um, yeah, it's still suggestive for mature audiences, though. So, you know, he's doing this weird yoga posture, and he talks about discipline. And, like, there's his buddy there, and, like, they're just having a conversation. And then he gets the call that the bridge had collapsed, you know, there's a bridge in town. And this reminds me of the Mothman because, you know, um, the Silver Bridge collapsed uh, at the culmination of the events of the Mothman prophecies. So like, um, there's a kid there. And so like the cops have been sitting there, there's a kid that's still up on the bridge someplace. So um, Vic climbs up to try to rescue him and the car goes into the drink and Vic dives in after him and somebody gives him a coat. And, uh, and like, you know, he's like saying, oh, you guys are like, you know, lazy sitting on your butts, but I have to go and do a news report anyways. And so then we have this here where we have somebody talking about the weakness of America. Uh, he's kind of a soldier. And like, even at this time, like when I was in the army, uh, he's wearing pretty much khakis, I think. I think this uniform was pretty much out of style by 1988. Um, but maybe not. I don't know everything. We, we saw that with me thinking that Denny O'Neill had written a lot of those Batman stories, but it wasn't. Um, okay, so yeah. So the, yeah, this story is basically about a bunch of army guys. They're like uh, a squad of four people, and they have this group called Bravo Group, and they're going to do a public demonstration. And then these four ninja guys show up, kill them all, and... Um, uh, here we go. We have like the weird yoga posture again, and uh, it leads to like a when he got the coat, somebody gave him a coat, and it was from one of these so soldiers, so he's able to track him down. And uh, he, they they get him into a dark corner, and he like really beats the crap out of him. While these these four guys were bragging about being four guys that beat seven guys, and then. Um, it ends on a cliffhanger because it's part one of two. And so, like, I think I've got this one. So I might read this one and then put the question away for a little while because it's a little bit too heavy for what I want right now. I'd like to read some Thanos and some uh, Infinity stuff from my my box that I got. Um, but overall, I like these books. They're very good. You know, I think I did some complaining during this, but, you know, it's late in the day. I'm a little tired. Uh, so... I think I'm going to close it off there for now. Thank you for watching. Remember to hit the like button. Um, and uh, tell me what your favorite Philip K. Dick, uh, Philip K. Dick book is. And tell me what your favorite movie is based on one of his works. And tell me what your favorite Grant Morrison work is, too, since I talked about uh, I didn't mean to talk about him at all, but I talked a lot about, a lot about him today. So oh, this is Super Comic Fun Time. Out.